It is now time for member statements. The member from Stormont, Dundas, and South Glengarry. Thank you, Speaker. This past Tuesday morning, my riding in Stormont, Dundas, and South Glengarry tragically lost an outstanding citizen. Peter Remillard was one of the was a very respected lawyer in Morrisburg and Chesterville, known throughout the business and farming community. He was called to the Ontario Bar in 1979 and to the Quebec Bar in 1981, and he joined the local Gorel and, Gren and Grenke law firm in 1983. Peter left his mark on this community throughout his years for his years of service. He presided over the Morrisburg and District Chamber of Commerce, the Dundas Dr District Cancer Society, the Morrisburg Business Improvement Association, and was the director of the Winchester and District Hospital Foundation and the Upper Canada Playhouse. He is also active in the martial arts and on the Parent Council for Schools and Recreation and on local law associations. Peter also gave law lectures for farmers at conferences for the Ministry of Agriculture. His friend and legal partner, Doug Granke, said of him, Peter was a brilliant lawyer who worked hard for the people and gave wise advice to all. He never said no to anyone. Peter was a strong worker in the community and enjoyed family. Peter's love of life, family, people, law, and hard work is an inspiration, and he will be missed by all. On behalf of the residents of Stormont Dundas, South Glengarry, I wish to offer our heartfelt condolences to his wife, Patricia, son, Liam, brother, Richard, sister, Kathleen, and parents, Romeo and Margaret. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. For the member statement, the member from Algola, Manitoulin. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. With municipal leaders returning home and Ogra Roma coming to an end this week, it was obvious someone was missing. Vern Peterson dedicated many years of his life to serving the community of Blind River. Vern entered into politics in 1978 and kept his seat until his recent passing, serving as mayor and councillor. Vern worked on every single committee and probably created a few. Vern did politics differently. Don't get me wrong, he always brought his A-game, but when the election was done, it was done, and up went his sleeves, and he immediately went to work for his constituents, always keeping in mind, in that heart, his community loved Blind River. Vern lived life to the fullest. His final request was that he wanted a celebration of life with laughter and music, and yes, Mr. Speaker, Johnny Cash and Elvis Presley were blasting as a celebration of life at the Blind River Legion yesterday. Even during the hectic days on the campaign trails, he found time to have coffee with his competition, Mayor Sue Jensen. Many community leaders across Algoma Manitoulin, the province, even internationally, came to pay their respect to Vern. Organizations such as his love for the Lions Club were just two weeks ago he held court sharing ideas and views on their projects. The Legionnaires were also there saying their farewell to their comrades, stating, we will remember him. The Mason men all came out to bid Vern adieu and safe journey to the higher kingdom. Many, many friends, so much respect shown for Vern. Vern left many gifts. Some of them were obvious in the strength and courage his granddaughter Tracy displayed, who shared a personal story on how her papa was her rock. Vern was innovative, creative, and had an amazing sense of humor. As his younger brother pointed out, how a simple can of pork and beans can be turned into a wonderful dish of fave au lard. The engine behind Vern was his love of his family. His loving wife, Betty, was always by his side in life and in family business. His love for his grandchildren was never in doubt to the kids known as Papa. In closing, Mr. Speaker, Vern, the ever so community minded person, was hoping to attend Phnom to accept his 35 year service pin. However, the powers that be needed him at his boardroom for committee work. To the Peterson family, I spoke to Phnom yesterday, and they would be honoured to present his 35 year pin to the family. Congratulations, Vern. Rest in peace. Meeting adjourned. Thank you. Member statement, the member from Halton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, as we near the end of February, I'm pleased to rise today to share some of the great experiences I've had in celebrating Black History Month. There have been countless events and celebrations taking place throughout the province, and I've been fortunate to attend a number of them in my Halton riding. 
On February 5th, I was invited by the Canadian Caribbean Association of Halton to attend a Black History Month kickoff celebration at Oakville Town Hall. In addition to the creative exhibits put on by the Oakville Museum, Sheridan College, and the Association of African Canadian Artists, attendees were treated to some incredible music musical performances by Beyond Sound and Jazz Duo, Diana Braithwaite and Chris Whiteley. Then, on February 9th, I visited a local school to watch what was an inspiring and thought-provoking documentary, The Last White Night. Directed by Canadian Paul Saltzman, it was a remarkable tale of reconciliation and civil rights history, inspired by actual events during the early 1960s. And just this past Tuesday, I joined the Premier, fellow caucus members, and a number of special guests for a memorable reception right here at Queen's Park. Mr. Speaker, events like these are a valuable reminder of the vital role that diversity, acceptance, and justice play in our province's strength and prosperity. It's important for us all to reflect on the history of Ontario's black community, to acknowledge the struggles and hardships endured by so many. Holding month-long celebrations help us to remain mindful of our difficult past, to appreciate past and present contributions. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Member Sabres, the member from Huron, Bruce. Thank you very much, Speaker. Today, it's my pleasure to so show support for the work that the Lake Huron Centre of Coastal Conservation is doing in my riding of Huron-Bruce and neighbouring ridings as well. The Lake Huron Centre for Coastal Conservation's goal is to protect and restore Lake Huron's coastal environment and promote a healthy coastal ecosystem. I <laughs> it means no windmills. I, I had the pleasure of meeting with Karen Alexander from the Centre just last week, where she informed me of the excellent work their group is doing in regards to the invasive species Phragmites. Invasive Phragmites is a serious threat to coastal systems because the dense monoculture stand severely disrupts natural coastal processes. The Coastal Centre has been working with municipalities to help control Phragmites on the shoreline since the early 2000s. However, this year, more than ever, with water levels likely rising, they'll also be lacking the proper tools to control this plant come the fall of 2015. Invasive Phragmites is an aggressive plant that spreads quickly and outcompetes native species for water and nutrients. It releases toxins from its roots into the soil to hinder the growth of and kill surrounding plants. I want to do everything I can to help support centres like this who are working hard to support our lakes and coastal systems. This centre in particular stands out to me because not only do they want what's best for Lake Huron, in fact all of our Great Lakes, but they also recognize the economic and social dimensions of sustainability. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member Statements, the member from London West. Uh, thank you, Speaker. It's my great honour to rise today to recognize Steve Revington, an extraordinary teacher from my riding of London West who was recently named among the top 50 finalists for the Global Teacher Prize. This is public education's equivalent of the Nobel Prize, and Steve was one of only three Canadians selected from over 5,000 nominations from 137 countries. The prize recognizes an exceptional teacher who has gone beyond the classroom to make an outstanding contribution to student learning and to the profession. This is exactly what Steve has done as a much-loved teacher at Emily Carr Public School and a respected mentor to his colleagues. Steve's focus is on authentic learning, a style of learning that encourages students to create meaningful, useful products to be shared with the world. Authentic learning draws on brain research that says the closer learning is to real-life scenarios, the more motivated and engaged students become. And according to his students, authentic learning works. One student says, last year my partner and I had to design a capsule that could protect an egg from a two-story drop. I learned science, math, English, etc. from the experience. And the way I learned these things is unforgettable. I can still envision my capsule dropping. I learned more in that unit than I did in all of grade four. My heartfelt congratulations to Steve on his outstanding achievement and sincere thanks for the difference he is making for students. Thank you. 
The member statements. The member from Barrie. Thank you, Speaker. On Saturday, February 21st, Canadians from 65 communities across Canada participated in the coldest night of the year, including MPP, the MPP from Newmarket Aurora. This walk provides participants with the opportunity to experience a hint of the challenges faced by those experiencing homelessness while raising revenue for important uh, local charities. In Barrie, participants walked in support of local, the local shelter Youth Haven. 2015 is a special year for Youth Haven as they are celebrating their 25th year of incorporation and working to change the landscape of service provision for youth in need. Youth Haven has expanded its programming in this last year to include transitional housing in addition to the emergency services they have always provided. Youth Haven also has 20 emergency beds available to any youth between the ages of 16 and 24, and now has five transitional beds where youth can stay for up to a year, have a lock on the door, develop deeper life skills and goals, and experience semi-independent living in a supportive environment. Youth Haven also offers case management, which helps participants expand their awareness of strengths, goals, and barriers. The case manager works in tangent with the life skills coordinator, counselors, and community partners to provide wraparound care to the youth. I thank this local organization for raising over $25,000 for this great organization. Congratulations. Thank you very much. The uh, member statements. The member from Elgin, Middlesex, London. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, 94.1 My FM and Codes Plumbing, Heating and Airs Random Act of Kindness Day took place Wednesday, February 4th in St. Thomas and Elgin County. And it was there to build on the vision that St. Thomas and Elgin County is building a better community but also to encourage the pay-it-forward philosophy. Random Act of Kindness Day is an opportunity for individuals, schools, communities, service clubs, businesses, healthcare institutions, churches, to perform small, simple, kind deeds. Experience a unique grassroots initiative designed around doing nice things for nice people. Last year, Random Act of Kindness Day caused a ripple effect across the county. We never imagined the tremendous response we'd receive to this initiative for our community. The true impact of the Random Act of Kindness initiative may never fully be revealed. In St. Thomas and Algon alone, MyFM distributed over 5,000 cards, and if only a fraction of that was paid for, uh, speaker, it was well worth it. The real reason the concept has caught attention is that it reminds everyone of our greatest natural resource in St. Thomas and Algon County, and that's the people. So on February 4th, we met at Memorial Arena for a chili lunch, and the chili lunch was provided for by Kathy's Catering, and it was delicious. Uh, we want to thank Williams Funeral Home for also sponsoring the event, but we really want to be proud of Codes Heating and Air Conditioning, which gave out a free uh, uh, furnace for someone in need for the day, and also for my FM for being such a strong promoter of our community. Thank you, Speaker. Mr. Stevens, the member from Beaches, East York. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And while visitors regularly visit and flock to the beach during the spring, summer, and the autumn seasons, it's not usually top of mind during the winter months, and especially not this year. But community builders are helping to make a beach a, a, beach a year-round destination with events such as the Clutes, Light Up the Beach, and now the Winter Stations Project. And on Family Day of this year, Mr. Speaker, five drab-looking lifeguard stations between Kew Gardens and the Balmy Beach Club were transformed into vibrant pieces of art. Local resident Ted Merrick from Ferris & Associates had a vision to bring life to the beach in winter. To make this happen, he reached out to his friend Roland Koltoff from Raw Design. He had input from art consultant Justin Ridgway and sought the advice and the assistance of local councillor Mary Margaret McMahon. Five submissions were picked out of more than 200 entries from around the world to dress up these five lifeguard stations on the beach. The Sling Swing by Ed Butler and Dan Wiltshire and Francis McGowan evokes a canvas beach chairs that you can sit in to give the feet a rest. And the Driftwood Throne by Daniel Medeiros is a 15-foot high structure made from reclaimed lumber. Snow Cone by Ryerson students Lily Gion and Dion Diana Concan, it mimics an igloo and pine cone with touches of color, and the hot box looks foreboding but offers cozy refuge from the winter chill. Also designed by Timmy Wilson was the wingback. Olson. The wingback has a concave shape which faces the southwest and corrals heat from the sun. 
The winter stations will stay up until March the 20th, and I encourage you all to come down to the beach and visit these imaginative structures. Thank you to the organizers, the contest winners, and all of the artists who submitted the art, their ideas. We look forward to supporting this as an annual tradition. Thank you. Further member statements? Further member statements. The member from Ottawa South. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Je suis heureux. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I am happy today to rise and recognize the 170th anniversary of Ms. Of Mayor Bruyere in Ottawa. Government House Leader at the celebration of the 170th, 170th anniversary of Mother Bruyere coming to Ottawa and her efforts to establish a school, a hospital, an orphanage and a home for the elderly laid the very foundation for the Bruyere continuing care that exists today. Briere is now one of the largest health care institutions of its kind in Canada. It has evolved, evolved into a complex continuing care network that includes Elizabeth Briere in St. Vincent Hospitals, two family medical centres, multiple residences, a foundation and a research institute which works heavily in the fields of primary and palliative care. For generations, Briere has been providing compassionate quality care with their ongoing commitment to advancing teaching, education and research. We need this community. We need the community to work together with patients, residents, and families in order to be able to work in both official languages. And the volunteers at Briere Continuing Care, and most of all, thank you for caring for the people who we care for most. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. I thank all members for their statements. It's now time.